Ray Life Woman. Okay. So, um, should I just jump into it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Okay. So, hi, everyone. Um, I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, medyo glitchy lang at saka uh, hindi siya naging medyo problematic. Again, that's one of the challenges of things being online and teaching online. And uh, that is something that we have to deal with on a daily basis kung magpapatuloy itong trend na to. So, um, share ko na yung screen ko to you guys um, so we can go into yung discussion natin. So, hi muna sa inyong lahat who are already here. Uh, again, thank you so much for being so patient sa paghihintay. Um, All right, let's just, uh, let me just hold on to see kung nakikita yung screen. All right, well, first, uh, can you hear me, guys? Well, okay lang ba? I tried using a mic para mas clear yung audio natin. Okay. All right. So, uh, ito yung session natin uh, this afternoon. It's about switching teaching from offline to online. Um, I, I actually think na ito yung perfect storm when it comes to creating online content. Um, hindi maganda yung situation. I mean, hindi ideal, but um, ano eh, out of great necessity comes innovation. And uh, it's something that we have to deal with right now. Um, lalo na dahil paparating yung yung bagong sem or bagong school year okay so um a bit of introduction lang muna before we go on uh, kung sino ako i am like amaravilla uh, actually yung aking professional background is in psychology i graduated with a degree in psychology i am a licensed uh, licensed um, psychometrician and uh, one of the things that i fell in love with while i was still studying was educational psychology Kasi just thinking of ways on how students can learn better has always been something of a point of interest for me. Kasi siguro throughout my life, uh, marami ako mga na-encounter na iba-ibang mga people, syempre mga classmates mo, and uh, teachers have a knack for, alam niyo yun, doling out yung mga classmates na medyo may difficulty sa learning dun sa mga medyo nag excel sa class. So ever since I was a kid, uh, we were... <laughs> tasked to help out yung mga classmates namin na medyo nahihirapan sa pag-aaral. And the one thing na I learned throughout the entire thing is that you actually have to tweak yung language, you have to tweak your behavior, even yung pattern na pagtuturo. So, ang um, pinaka-idea ko while I was working on my on my thesis nung ako yung nag-aaral is how can we hack yung studying process. So that is yung parang bit of an intro ko into educational psychology and into the world of teaching. Which is funny kasi I swore when I was a kid na I would never be a teacher. Uh, not to bring you guys down, but be, it was because my lola was a master teacher in a clan. My titas were teachers, my cousins were teachers, and I see the sacrifice that they make on a daily basis. Uh, sa pagtuturo nila. So, inuwi sila ng homework, uh, gagawa ng kartolina, yung mga ganun. And sabi ko, hindi ko kayang gawin yun for the rest of my life. But still, I found myself doing this. And there's a, a trajectory doon. So, my process at my journey doon. So, ang may share ko sa inyo right now would be my own experiences dito sa transition from offline learning to online learning. So, we'll talk about why 
it's a good idea for you to do this, how you can do this, and yung I'll walk you through the process of how I do things. Um, sa planning ng lessons ko and even yung flow ng lessons ko. All of those we're going to talk about later. And then we're going to leave some time for you to ask questions if you have any. Um, kasi at least from the content creator side, maybe I can help you out. So if you guys know more about um, yung education and theories and everything like that, which I commend you for, siguro dun lang dun sa side ako ng, ng uh, content creation, at least in bite-sized bite, bite pieces, yun yung may share ko sa inyo, okay? So, just a quick little activity. So, question lang, what do you think yung ibig sabihin ng numbers na ito? Okay, so just think on it. Um, dr drum up yung inyong guess <laughs> kung anong meaning ng mga numbers na ito, okay? And we'll talk about that later in the discussion, okay? Now, quick again introduction. So I've been a YouTube edu creator for five years now. Uh, we call the role edu creator because we create educational content. So educational content creator. I'm not very um, happy about yung idea ng influencer, yung term na yun na influencer. Hindi ko siya actually masyadong gusto. Um, at least for me, you know, nothing bad with that. Pero sa akin kasi I like... I prefer being called an edu creator because it holds a certain weight and of course responsibility then on our part to only make content na magiging positive at makakatulong sa ibang tao. So yun yung goal. And um, throughout this journey it's been actually a wild ride. In 2017 I was chosen to be one of the next top finalists in the Philippines. Actually ito yung first batch. So uh, entering yung entire event, I was the only educational content creator sa labing dalawa kami. Most of them were makeup vloggers or lifestyle vloggers and uh, I was the only one teaching. So every time na may press event or anything like that, people would ask, ano yung ginagawa ninyo? And when I say that I teach math, I get the same puzzled response sa mga tao. And the reason for that I feel is that hindi pa masyadong uh, kilala sa Philippines yung uh, role as an edu, edu creator or educational content creator. When you talk about YouTube or Facebook, a lot of people still revert to old type ng content, yung pranks, makeup videos, tutorials, mukbang, ganun yung idea. So hindi pa siya na, hindi pa siya na optimize, hindi pa siya na maximize ng mga people who want to create positive content. But that has changed since then. I was called back to be a mentor for YouTube Next Up 2018. Uh, this time, there were other creators na iba na yung content, hindi nilang puro music or lifestyle. We had El Uy who was making decorations and stuff like that. So when I was called back as a mentor, natuwa ako kasi hindi na ako alone at least in uh, the kind of content that I made. I was also invited to YouTube EduCon in India, in India in 2018. So these are just some of the perks. So medyo yung ating segue na rin tayo sa why, no? Some of the perks of being an educational content creator these things happen. So may mga opportunities like this. I was the only uh, delegate from the Philippines at that time. And uh, it was actually held in Gurugram on, in India. Which is funny kasi yung Gurugram means basically uh, city of teachers. And nandun yung edukod. So I walked into a room. I didn't know what to expect. No? Kasi ang feeling ko noon at that time parang ang lonely-lonely ko. Kasi ako lang yung gumagawa ng educational content for Filipinos at that time. Ang, ang thinking ko, akala ko, ako lang mag -isa. So when I walked into the room, there were about 300 creators, most of them Indian, and all of them were educational content creators. Ganon karami yung gumagawa ng content educational sa India. And granted, mas malaki talaga di hamak ang bansa ng India, pero one thing I took away from that is sabi ko, ang wish ko is hopefully someday sa Philippines may ganun din, na may ganun karami na educational content creators out there. Na we will be able to fill a ballroom ng mga teachers and educa educators who are basically helping people. So the goal was simple. It was to democratize education, but it's actually very hard. And uh, I'm happy that Vibal is actually doing something like this because it's always been my dream to encourage more teachers to jump uh, on board this uh, trend na to ng online learning because we can actually teach and reach more. And that is the story nito. So after that, uh, yeah, I was there as a panelist as well. So nagulat sila kasi um, hindi nila 
I mean, most of them hear about the Philippines sometimes in a negative light, no? And uh, it, I, it was very ano ba, heavy on me then to represent the country in that way. But I'm happy because um, when I shared to them some of the things that we did sa Team Like, which is my channel, um, na kakatuwa that they were able to glean some points then in the way that we do things. Because one thing na very unique din sa atin is discard. Eh, and we maximized namin yan dun sa team. Um, if you have any questions about that in the you know, end of the discussion, you can send them over, okay? Now, I was also a speaker and panelist for the YouTube Fan Fest Moms edition last year. Uh, they were supposed to do another one this year, but with uh, the COVID-19 crisis, may baka mag iba iba uli ang mga schedule. Of course, in priorities, we understand that. But I'm happy that I got to do this. Again, being the only teacher doon sa entire spread. Uh, I was with uh, Bianca, um, Judy, and Andy on stage. And lahat sila parang, uh, of course, they knew each other, pero they didn't know that uh, there was a teacher teaching sa, sa Philippines at the time. So, and the highlight of that is this, no? I was actually put up sa poste sa MOA. So, bucket list ticked off. Nagulat din ako dyan. Uh, surprise lang, pero <laughs> ang weird, weird of feeling. But again, as teachers hindi naman yun yung yung goal natin but our goal is to to teach more and if this actually helps me reach more so i can teach more then i will gladly do that now this year 2020 has actually chosen as one of few to creators for change uh, ambassadors uh, it's a title na medyo heavy rin um, and it's a joint project actually the UNDP uh, European Union and uh, YouTube and uh, I was sent over to Thailand uh, for a uh, boot camp doon. So it's an entire week. I was with uh, other creators from Asia Pacific. So we got to talking about yung tips, the, the workflow, ano yung ginagawa namin, and anong klaseng positive content yung pwede pa natin gawin. And uh, again, very excited ako that there are more of you guys who are actually basically being forced into this. Funny lang kasi one of the things that people think about when it comes to creating content online is competition. And I wanted to get that out of the way before we uh, proceed. Because one of the fears I feel is that um, it's a lot competitive. When we talk about content create, creation online, online learning, it's like it's not going to be competitive. Maybe I don't like my students. Ko. Maybe they'll find another teacher or anything like that. But what's nice is that so far in the educational content creator community, it's always been a positive community. Like uh, Dr. Uh, Peter Esperanza, if you don't know him, he's a number bender, and I always say collaboration, eh, not competition. So I'm happy that there will be more of you guys na mag create ng content, lalo na sa ibang mga subjects like Adaling Panlipunan, science, chemistry, biology, all of these things. Marami pang mga opportunities for that. Okay? Now, dito tayo sa content cre creation process. Now, most people think when we create content, when we create lessons, uh, ang focus nila lagi is on the how. Yun yung first first na challenge. Paano ko makakagawa ng video? Anong equipment ang kailangan ko? Paano ko ito ma-maximize? How can I make sure that all my students are watching? All of these things, ito yung unang nakaharang. But uh, actually, sometimes, ang problem is that we're asking the wrong questions. No? Kasi hindi siya nagmamatter that much as long as you have yung correct answer as your anchor point. Now, yung what would follow, anong klaseng content, anong, kla anong topics ang pag-uusapan natin, and then yung why, which is basically what would happen after all of this. But the more, I think, organic now flow when it comes to content creation would be something like this. You start with your why. Again, diba, with all things naman, if you have your purpose in place, everything else will follow. So, same thing dito sa discussion na to, we're going to ask the question muna why before we ask the what, which is what kind of content will you produce, ano klaseng online teaching ang gagawin ninyo, and then yung how natin. So yung how, we will cover everything from my workflow, how I pick out my lessons, ano yung um, flow din niya kapag film na siya and kung paano siya nagiging effective, okay? Now, let's talk about the whys first. So why should you make the switch from offline to online? Now, the very, very quick answer to that would be this. Kasi sabi ng DepEd, no? sabi ng uh, ating leadership, uh, may possibility that if classes resume in August, it may possibly be through online. 
And uh, sabi nga ni uh, Secretary Leonis, education must continue whether face-to-face or vir- virtual with or without physically going to school. And I think at the core of our beings as educators, we all agree, right? We all agree dito. We agree na hindi pwedeng huminto yung education. In fact, um, ang pinaka-moto, if you consider it that, ng Team Laika is never stop learning. So, kung hindi tayo pwede huminto sa learning, at in turn, tayong education, educators, hindi tayo pwede huminto sa teaching, ang pwede na lang natin gawin is to make use of the tools that we have. So, basically, again, yung question na sinong mag adjust apparently, yung teachers, no? And um, hindi natin i-minimize yung mga limitations nito. We'll talk about those then in a bit. Um, but right now, ito yung realidad. Na even if ayaw or hindi kaya, kailangan nating mag-adjust. Um, which is actually, in, sa aking personal opinion, ha, ako lang, masaya nga ako in a way about this. Kasi in the five years since I started making videos on YouTube and making free educational content online, um, lahat ng teachers na nakikilala ko, my cousins, my friends, even my teachers when I was still a student, tuwing nakikita ko sila, I would tell them, ano, ma'am, mag, ano naman po kayo, gawa, na kayo ng, gawa naman kayo ng content, please. Or um, gusto nyo po, kahit ako nang mag-film, ako nang mag edit ako na lahat, para lang merong mga educational content na online. Lalo na yung mga teachers na magagaling. Kasi I don't know about you, no? Pero um, one thing I tell my students, and when I, say, when I say students, most of my students and viewers are adult learners na, no? Na ang pinaka malaking difference namin is that I was blessed with a lot of great teachers, especially sa early years ko. So, I mean, kayo as teachers, di ba? If you could just maybe close your eyes for a few seconds and think back. Who are the teachers who actually encouraged you, turned you into who you are right now, and even inspired you to choose to teach? Probably meron eh, di ba? Meron kayong listahan ng names like that. Okay, yung mga teachers ninyo. And just a quick little thing, if you could thank them maybe later on in the day, please do that. Um, and ako ganun din eh. So may mga teachers ko na magagaling. And it's sad na ma- ang conundrum would be dahil they are ano they are a few and far in between sa society these are teachers who are great who try really hard who are involved sa students nila tas dagdagan mo pa yung factor na overburdened sila sa work marami masyadong mga kailangan gawin mga requirements dagdag mo pa yung change sa behavior attitude ng students nagiging sobrang challenging na i-replicate itong magagaling na mga teachers na ito pero if you think about it if we go online, if we actually film them, if we, we share their content online, they will be able to teach far more than yung mga people in their classrooms. And that has been yung pinaka malaking revelation sa akin in this entire journey. Kasi bakit? Sabi in 2019, and this is not new statistics, no? Sabi, Filipinos spend an average of 10 hours and 2 minutes on the internet daily. Maybe mas mahaba pa for those of you who have good internet connection or um, yung mga bata na di ba, halos maghapon magdamag ng online. Now, 4 hours and 12 minutes of that is on, on social media. And yun lang yung fact. And when I started reading yung trend nito, kahit way back in 2015, I knew things had to change. Kasi the kids are already online. The learners are already online. Nandun na sila eh. So kung hindi natin sila imimit kung nasan sila, they may lose the chance to learn. And uh, like I posted long then yesterday, it's the teacher's primary task to meet students where they are. And since they are online, then I would have to be online as well. And that is the ano, yun lang taga reality ng situation, so I had to make adjustments. Now, ito yung funny na fact din dito. 3 hours and 33 minutes ang sinaspend na average Filipino on videos. Now, the question would be, anong kinds ng videos ito? Kasi with the library ng content that we have online, maliit pa lang na sliver ng content na yun ang educational or even ang positive. Most of these would be prank videos, dance videos, and again, nothing wrong with those in moderation. Pero ito yung market eh. Very ripe na yung mga bata, yung society natin. Kasi sabi na sila eh, marunong sila matuto. At nandun na sila. 
And if you take a quick survey kahit sa bahay ninyo, ilan lang sa inyo yung nanonood pa ng TV on a regular basis? When I was younger, it was a, an entire thing sa bahay, right? Yung uupo kayo, you plop down sa harap ng couch. Eh, sa harap ng TV sa couch. And then as a family, you, wa- you would watch your shows. Mag-aaway kayo sa remote control. Si mommy ang masusunod kasi gusto niya ng telenovela. All of these things, part yan ang growing up natin. Pero ngayon, hindi na siya ganun eh. The kids are already online. And the thing with being online is they get to choose what they watch. And sa atin, ang epekto nun would be they get to choose kung ano yung matututunan nila. So ang goal natin would be for us to be kahit pa paano a good option to provide content na hindi, hindi naman solely entertaining, but it has to be of some quality and convince kids na this will be worth their time. Now, a good way to gauge this when it comes to the kind of content you put out or the kind of online learning that you could do would be to actually do a quick survey sa mga estudyante. Anong klaseng videos ang pinapanood ninyo? And actually, on their YouTube app, or kahit anong app na meron sila sa cellphone, or kahit sa internet history nila, you would see yung kind of content na pinapanood nila. Ano ba yung mga sinishare nila on social media? And through that, you can kind of get an idea sa anong klase yung language, anong klase yung speed, anong klase yung content na they find interesting. So kahit pa paano you have that on, ano, at the back of your head when you're creating your own educational content. Okay? Now, um, just a quick little uh, thing then. So why did I start doing this and why would you? Why do I want you to consider doing it? Uh, this is a picture of my class in 2015. So very small class, Paul Saisha. I have maybe roughly, a little to, ilang students lang yan. Uh, 12, 11, absent pa yata isa. And uh, I would spend an entire semester where, traveling from Fairview to Ortigas to teach them, this small group of kids hours preparing lessons, hours executing yung aking uh, uh, lessons, then mga activities nila and everything like that. And then when they finish the SEM, it will be just those 12 students. Again, absent pa isa. <laughs> so, ito yung, ito yung limitations. Eh. But now, actually, as of today, we have about 525,000 plus subscribers on Team Laika. So if you think about it, sa scale na yun, I'm basically teaching tens of thousands ng mga classrooms without moving an inch. So I'm just in my house reaching this many people. So yun yung sinasabi natin na ang maganda sa online learning is you can actually scale it. And um, the beauty of it then is that educational content is evergreen. It makes I mean it's always helpful, it's always positive, it's always going to be a, a, a cure or a solution for someone na nagahanap ng tulong. And again, it hasn't been an easy road, pero this is the potential. Diba? Ibig sabihin, if natutulungan natin, again, the goal of teaching naman talaga is to help more people. Pero now, if you're putting up your content online, if you're teaching online, you are now just able to reach more people. Okay? So, yun yung, diba? I'm just tossing the dream over to you guys. Now, ano yung limitations? Again, we have to be very frank about these. Ano yung problem points and how can we make up for them? The first one would be very simple and very obvious. Connectivity. And uh, <laughs> again, may first-hand na akong uh, sample dito kanina. So, um, I'm very grateful that Viva was very patient with me. I was having trouble connecting doon sa platform ng Zoom, how to log in, stuff like that. All of these things, yun ang first na challenge. And kanina nga may nagka-flash na red light sa screen ko na um, mahina na daw yung connectivity dito sa bahay. So, may onting panic sa akin. Kasi may limitations talaga. We talk about bandwidth, we talk about speed. Sa Philippines, hindi ito something na kaya natin ipagmalaki. In fact, uh, sabi sa news, di ba, this was in 2019, pero this is the latest na I could find, scaring the internet. We, we below ano tayo, global average. In fact, a uh, quick little tidbit is, mas mabilis pa ang internet sa war-torn Sir- Syria kesa sa atin. So if you think about it, di ba, ang Syria, battle-worn, binobomba, mas mabilis pa yun ang internet nila kesa sa atin. So, ganun ka, kahirap yung challenge when it comes to internet speed. Na hindi pa natin ina-account dyan yung fact na hindi naman lahat may device sa bahay. But again, we, ha- we can have minor adjustments naman about that. We can provide other options for that. 
Okay, we'll talk about that naman din later if you, if you have any questions, no? Pero ang thing kasi is this, most people encounter this problem and then they stop. They just say, ay, hindi naman pala kaya sa Pilipinas eh. Wala namang internet lahat, so we, we should just stop. But again, we have to acknowledge the problem, pero understand na since this is a problem that I personally cannot fix, then I should not let it stop me na lang. Okay, yun na lang yung perspective. Change na lang perspective kasi yun na mababago yung sitwasyon. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng discarte, eh. discarding Pinoy. Na when we have problems, ano lang tayo? Iikutan natin yan. Gagawa natin ng paraan. And uh, one thing I tell my students all the time is this, don't let your anxieties about things beyond your control keep you from working on problems you can actually solve. Kasi if we were to wait for everyone to have a good internet connection to start teaching online, it will never happen. Uh, hindi ka mangyayari yun. Kasi... Uh, ang tagal-tagal. And kadalasan, if you think about life, di ba, it's necessity that breeds innovation. So, kung merong demand, kung may uproar, kung meron na talagang blatant need, sometimes yun yung kailangan para lang magbago yung mga bagay. And siguro, in a way, kasama na rin dito yung internet connectivity. So, hindi natin siya kayang baguhin, pero doon tayo sa kaya natin i-adjust. Now, ang next problem would be yung connection. So, when you talk about connection, uh, it's not just yung connection sa internet or connection sa power source. It's more of physical, human connection, interaction, emotional teaching. Paano siya ma-achieve kung online lahat? And there are a bunch of questions. No? First question na I get all the time, will the students pay attention? Okay? Um, pag online yung class, pag video yung nagtuturo, manonood pa ba yung students? And uh, one quick answer to this would be, the fact now, when we were younger, we had educational shows on TV, right? Pero we still paid attention. In fact, we paid more attention to the screen than we did actually dun sa teacher sometimes. So ang solution dito sa will the students pay attention would be basically the kind of content you put out. And uh, we have to make certain adjustments. Again, hindi na bago sa atin yung idea na ang Gen Z kids have a shorter attention span. They are more fascinated with examples, color, storytelling, emotional engagement. All of these things we already know. We just have to apply it to the setting of online learning. As the next question would be, will the students participate? Because it's naman, di ba? Very easy na. Okay, I'll post my my video and then I'll wait. Paano kung hindi sila magpaparticipate? Paano kung hindi sila sa sagot? And a perfect example would be this, that what we're doing right now. Kasi I see all of you guys typing up yung ating hashtag na learn as one ph all the time throughout the entire conversation since we started. This is basically a very basic form of participation, right? So you are participating. Why? Kasi you feel na maybe the certificate is a good trade uh, for your time. Maybe kasi you really want to encourage more people to watch. All of these things just mean na kung meron tayong reward system of some sort, if meron tayong may establish na need sa students, they will actually participate. They will take time to participate. Remember that these are kids who will actually film for an entire day para sa isang TikTok video. Diba? You have to think of that. Na the kids aren't necessarily lazy or non-participative. It's just that hindi nila siguro nakikita yung reward dun sa hinihingi nating form of participation. So meron lang certain adjustments, changes like that, but these are not new problems anyway. Third, third problem point would be this, what if the students cheat? And ang cheating ngayon, high-tech na, no? Um, hindi na rin basta-basta. Kasi when you talk about cheating, dati, nung panahon uh, na wala pang internet, it will have to be very personal. So, kasama na rin doon yung guilt eh. Kasi, ibang usapan yung nangungopya ka sa katabi mo sa nag-google ka ng sagot. And the key here is staying on top of things. So, as an educator, you have to be more sly than your students. Now, a good fix for this would be having a group, okay? Having um, uh, an organization of some sort ng mga educators din who know more, okay? Kung baga, kung ang mga estudyante natin ay nagtutulungan na mandaya, dapat nagtutulungan din tayo, nahulihin sila pag nag-cheat sila. And that exchange of information has to be more in real time at mas, mas active. Kasi maraming mga tools naman na pwede natin gamitin din online. 
So for example, a teacher in Dava will find a student na, oh, baka nag-cheat siya. Pero kung ang solution would be a teacher from Quezon City, dati, imposible na mag-share sila ng best practices. Pero ngayon, isang Facebook post lang ang katapat niyan. Isang comment lang yan, isang email lang yan. Pwede tayong magtulungan. So again, these are things that we can do. And those are things na hindi natin gayang gawin sa classroom setting if you think about that. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng tumawag ng tulong sa teacher sa Davao para bantayan yung klase mo na nag-cheat sa harap mo. Kasi it'll just be you and the students there. Okay? So again, these are not new problems. Another question would be, will it actually work? And I guess sa lahat ng problem points na ito, ito yung pinaka-heavy. <laughs> ito yung pinaka-mahirap na i-deal. Kasi may limitations talaga siya. But siguro take it from me na lang in my experience, the first challenge for me would be my learners are mostly adult learners. So these are people who haven't been in school for years, some of them even decades. And um, ang goal nila is to pass exams. So particularly civil service exams, that's what we started with. But uh, with the setup ng online learning, not just uh, all the free videos that I have on YouTube, ha? hindi yun, kasi we also have an online learning program. All of these things, yung setup na yan, we've seen people actually achieve results and things na hindi ko rin in-expect. Kasi when I started teaching, lagi ko iniisip, nako, pag 50 plus na yan or 60 plus na yan, re realistically speaking, nako, mas mahirap sa kanilang pumasa. Pero ang oldest pastor namin in civil service is 62 years old. Na lalaki yun, firefighter siya. Pa-retire na nga eh. And then yung oldest female namin is 58 years old. So if there are older people who are learning, then it is not impossible for those who are younger to actually maximize yung learning din nila. Kasi kung nga natututo nga yun, di ba sinasabi natin, the, ano, you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Pero these are older people learning online. And ang lagi inisip, di ba pag matanda, hindi na sila makapag-adjust. Pero hindi eh. Kasi bakit? Kasi nandun yung motivation to learn. So again, it all, boil, it all boils down to how do we motivate the kids? How do we sell yung idea they should participate, they should be attentive. And all of these things, again, are not unique problems. Kasi problema na to sa classroom noon pa. Tama? And alam natin yan kasi joke sa Pilipinas yung row 4. Tama? And uh, I think most of you agree with that din. Ano yung row 4 concept, di ba? Na pag ikaw ay nasa row 4, basically, ito na yung mga school buhol, ito na yung mga students who don't pay attention. Kasi ang nagpa-participate lang yung mga nasa first row. So even if nasa classroom setting ka, na physical classroom, all of these problems are still there. In fact, it's even harder sometimes eh. Bakit? Kasi when you talk about student participation, if for example, you ask a question, you feel the question sa inyong buong classroom. Oh, sige. So class, do any of you know Julius Caesar? Tama? You throw the question to the entire, sabi natin, 30 student classroom. Ang kadalasan na mangyayari dyan would be the other 29 would just actually stare at you Kung sinaswerte ka na merong bibo sa classroom mo, yung valedictorian, yung nag advance reading, siya lang yung sasagot. So when you talk about student participation, ganun din. Isa lang siya, siya lang din ang nagpa-participate. Now, pero pag online, lalo na kung meron kang tools, meron kang logs, meron kang uh, proof, and even sa pinaka-basic at libreng social media, you would actually be able to see which people already saw the post. Diba? Sa, kahit sa Facebook groups, may mga ganun. So all of these things, you will have information dun sa ganun. And that will actually aid you in making sure that your students see these things. Yung uh, magical nga na scene button, diba? Kapag kayo ay nagta-type sa messenger, yun palang feedback na yun, instant feedback yun. So again, it's all about maximizing current tools that we have. Okay? Now, next problem would be when it comes to collaboration. It's very tricky talaga. Kasi when we talk about collaboration as a goal, and we all know that, right? Na in this time, na skills-based ang hiring, na skills-based ang industries. Students have to learn how to work together. Pero hindi na rin naman to imposible. Kasi again, marami ng mga tools that will actually encourage collaboration. They can actually build things together even if they are physically apart. We talk about programming, we talk about web design. All of these things are they can do nang nasa program process. May mga apps for that. Um, if you, for example, are teaching a uh, group sa ABM or uh, sa marketing, right? You can actually even plan events or kung yun ang kanilang uh, final events sa kanilang class. Uh, kung kailangan nila mag-concert, 
pwede na nga rin online lahat. Everything from the invite, from the planning, all of these things you can follow along. There are apps for that. You would be able to see kung sino ang gumawa ng certain tasks. And these are things na actually in real life, in the physical setting, baka nahihirapan nga tayong gawin. Kasi when we talk about, di ba, yung final grade nila nakabasa sa isang event, alam natin yan kasi naging estudyante din tayo. Kadalasan, limang tao lang sa classroom ang kumikilos, di ba? Hindi nga natin alam kung ano ginawa ng iba eh. Unless irarat out nila yung mga classmates nila na walang ambag or walang contribution sa project, hindi natin malalaman. So we'll have to grade them accordingly. So all of these things, again, these are problems, these are challenges, but it's up to us to make adjustments. Yun yung thing when it comes to online learning. And a bit of encouragement to you guys, especially you who are starting out, the best thing about technology is that you can make adjustments really fast. So for example, if you feel this lesson doesn't work, take it down, refilm it, redo it. If you find the quiz too difficult, my instant feedback ka, so you can make adjustments. You can actually add more questions. You can do certain things to adjust dun sa current problems ng current batch na yan. So we have to siguro unlearn that. Kasi when the internet started out, ang feeling natin lahat immortal, di ba? Lahat nandiyan na siya. Pag nagkamali ako or nabulol ako sa isang session, nandun na yun, hindi na makakalimutan ng mga students ko. Pero we have to be forgiving sa sarili din natin. Kasi one thing that teachers sometimes forget when we teach our students is vulnerability. And what that creates is the gap. So, so students think na, ay, teacher ko sobrang perfect niya. So yung first honor ko, siya yung pwedeng humabol doon. Pero ako, dahil hindi ako katulad nila, dito na lang ako. Diba? Lagi nila sasabi na hindi ako pinanganak matalino, hindi ako magaling. Buong lahi namin ganito. Yun yung first challenge eh. But if we show students that we are also vulnerable, we are human, sometimes we make mistakes. Ako, I make mistakes as well. Just admit it and move on. Forgive each other. It's actually good. So all of these, again, they can change. You just have to be open to innovation. Okay? Now, uh, a good example of collaboration would be this. Uh, we started this a few weeks ago. We have yung Learn From Home writing class. This is actually crowd-sourced. Uh, Volunteers ang nagpapatakbo nito. Basically, I asked my friends if any of them are willing na habang naka-ECQ tayo, ay magpo-proofread sila ng mga essays or submissions from people who want to learn English. And uh, I got a bunch of volunteers, there were about 50 volunteers, I think, who stepped up. We created this writing class. Every week, I put up a, um, a writing assignment, although we skipped last week kasi medyo may mga hindi pa na-review. So magpo-post lang yung mga students or learners ng kanilang essay. Quick essay lang, doesn't have to be really good. And then you have your volunteers uh, making corrections or suggestions or recommendations sa kanilang essay. Again, instant feedback kasi online lahat. So again, you have to be just creative about it. Good thing then about the writing class is that it's also uh, crowdsourced. Ano siya? Um, pwedeng yung learner-to-learner -learner review, possible din siya. And uh, that can happen then really quickly. Okay? Now, um, sorry lang, uh, wait lang. My, my dog is, <laughs> my dog needs a bit of attention. <laughs> okay? Sorry, sorry about that. So again, these are challenges because we're live. But anyway, the, so this is your learn from home writing class. And uh, again, volunteer run, volunteer facilitated. And all of the, these are happening kahit na may minimal na akong uh, attention dito. So all I do as a facilitator is I put up a topic and then they just go along. Kapag meron lang mga... Meron lang mga uh, problematic points, doon lang ako papasok. Kapag may nagtag sa akin na, okay, may rude or merong uh, sumobra naman sa language, that's the only time na I am called in to moderate. So, yun yung mga things that we can be creative about. Okay? So, ang thing talaga, again, with the Filipino concept ng discard is, whatever we have, we have to make do with that and make the best out of it. Ganun ginagawa natin. So, we create opportunities, we make the most out of, out of them then. Now, dito tayo sa execution. So, how can you teach online? So, again, uh, more questions if you have any at the end of the discussion. Uh, Doon sa mga details about this. Pero I'll walk you through four things. Uh, first one, yung content. Ano yung kind of content that you can create? The flow, yung equipment that I use. I know I get a lot of questions uh, about that. Lalo na sa mga teachers who want to start creating content online. And of course, yung platform. Now, yung content muna. Kasi, as we always say sa YouTube world, the content is king. Ibig sabihin nun, kahit na hindi masyadong maganda yung ibang mga bagay na yan, if your content is really good, people will still 
listen, people will still watch, people will still participate. And ganun din kayo sa learning. Okay? Um, have you ever had a teacher like that? Right? Na you don't really care kung mispronounce niya yung words, you don't really care kung mag-overtime siya kasi you're learning from the, the teacher. Eh. Ganun din siya sa setting ng online. Now, a quick run through lang sa evolution ng channel ko sa experience ko. Again, right now, we have 525,000 plus subscribers na. Pero at the time that I made uh, itong particular slide nito, it was only 476. It was about, I think, in February. The first videos that I made were specifically for civil service exams. So ang story kasi was that in 2013, my mom had us take the civil service exam. And then I managed to, again, by the grace of God, basically top the test. So I was top one. My twin sister was top four. And then I started asking, bakit, Lord, bakit niyo binigay sa akin to? Eh, hindi naman ako matatrabaho sa government. I was in a private company then. And I was, I was happy with my job. And then the idea was that maybe God gave this to me so I can help more people. And uh, there, are more, there are a lot of employees na nasa government agencies na hindi pa nakakapasa ng civil service. So I first started teaching yung mga friends ng mom ko kasi my mom worked sa government then. So sila muna, and then when some of them passed, I thought, okay, that can actually be a good way to help other people. And then I had this friend who asked a question. Sabi niya, alam ko no high school tayo, may shortcut ka sa math problem na ito eh. Sabi niya, paano nga uli yun? So I sent the, the solution, nakapicture. Sabi niya, hindi ko maitindihan kasi picture lang. I video mo naman. So I made a video, which is one video, and then it evolved into this. Basically, people discovered that one video, yung technique video na yun, na nag-iisang video lang sa channel na lumang-luma na, hindi pa itong original channel ko. And then people started messaging me, finding me on Facebook, asking for more. And yun yung organic growth nung content ko ng, about the civil service exam or the civil service exam review. So again, when you have learners, kung para silang uhaw eh, and when they find yung something that will quench their thirst for knowledge, then they would want more. Ganun yung idea. Now, after that, things started changing. So, kasi bumaba or bumata yung demographic na nanonood sa akin. Kasi dati, when it was just civil service exam review, most of them were parents. Eh ngayon yung parents na to, lalo na pag pumasa sila ng exam, nire-recruit nila yung mga anak nila. So, I started making a study hack series. Basically, everything about what to eat, how to fall asleep, ano yung mga memory aids, all of these things na the study hack series. Now, after that, and people started doing well, the next problem is, how can they find a job? Kasi pasado na sila, eligible na sila, gusto nila promote So, ito na yung how to write your resume, what to, what to wear, paano sumagot sa interview questions. nag evolve yung content, depende sa need. Okay? Now, yung after that, dahil, <laughs> again, ano na eh, kumaga fulfilled na ako, nakapasa na sila, uh, may trabaho na sila, pero hindi pa sila na contento doon. They started asking for more. Sabi nila parang, Coach, I, I find na your videos are positive and motivational. Gawa ka naman on this. May problema ako, papayo naman. And then, doon pinangnak yung Sunday motivation videos. So, nag-evolve yung content, depende sa need. And that's something that we also have to take note of when we start creating content na educational, when we start teaching online. Hindi, hindi siya dapat maging sobrang fixed na kung ito yung nakasulat sa libro and ito yung process, it has to be, it has to be that way. First paragraph, second paragraph. Hindi. Sometimes you have to listen to your students and transition, okay, yung buong flow. Hindi naman natin minibigay yung complete power sa kanila na yung mga bagay lang na gusto lang matutunan, yun lang matututunan nila. Pero you can insert the things that they need to learn in between the things that they want to learn. Okay, so yun yung pinaka-organic na flow ng content creation, at least from my end, yung experience ko. Now, paano naman siya ngayon? So, ang nangyari was, after the ECQ, di ba, lumaganap yung fake news, lumaganap yung phishing sa internet, you get updates lagi sa online banking na wag kayong mag-click ng mga emails or anything like that. So, dahil may need for that, I started creating itong bagong series, which is internet safety. So, ganun lang yung nangyayari. So, merong need, and we fill the need. Ang key here is the pivot. And yun ang maganda sa online eh. Dahil wala kang infrastructure ng classroom, dahil wala kang limitations ng oras, kasi hindi mo naman pwede sabihin na, okay class, sa tingin ko kailangan nyo matutunan ng uh, concepts ng trigonometry. So stay kayo dito hanggang 10pm. Hindi mo naman pwedeng gawin yun, right? May limitations tayo. Pero when you do it sa internet, you can actually make room for that. So magkakaroon ng mas magandang flow pagdating sa content. So, ano yung 
pwedeng natin gawin to break it down. Ang idea kasi is this, when you create content, and I hope you take note of this, when you create content online, it's very hard for people to pay attention ng ganito katagal, in one hour and a half. Another problem would be this, kasi pagdating yan, lumampas na yan ng 15 minutes, mayroon ng mga mobile devices, may mga internet connection na hindi na nila kaya yung bandwidth, hindi na nila kaya mag-keep up, so magiging offline sila. So ang aking pinaka-rule of thumb when it comes to the length of content is, mga, ang ideal would be 10 to 20 minutes. Okay? Bite-sized. Now, yung 10 to 20 minutes na yan, kadalasan kumpleto na yan. Nandiyan na lahat mula sa intro, mula sa, sa discussion hanggang sa quiz. And how do I decide kung ano yung iti-teach or paano siya i-break down into smaller pieces? Kasi nga, hindi mo pwedeng gawing comprehensive lecture lahat eh. Kasi mawala yung attention nila eh. Or even if you have to do a lecture like this, yung isang buong araw na lecture or kalahating araw na lecture, you actually have to subdivide that pa sa per topic, right? And paano mo yun gagawin? Dahil nga, again, sometimes things don't work na per chapter ng libro, as would happen pag traditional learning pa nag-uusapan, you have to think of a timeline. Ito yung suggestion ko. This is how my mind works when it comes to creating content. The first question would be, what do I need to teach? Ano ba talaga yung learning objective? Ano talaga yung kailangan mong ituro sa part na ito? Now, if, for example, you have to teach algebra. So yun yung unang-unang, kumbaga hero piece mo, algebra. Ang problem is, and even sa classrooms, you would know this if you're teaching sa classroom, lalo na kung math, kapag nagturo ka ng algebra, marami yung hindi na rin makakahabol doon. Now, bakit? Kasi hindi sila solid sa fundamentals nila. So, ang thing is, when you make a hero piece, for example, may online lesson ka sa algebra, you have to think agad kung meron na ba akong preparation for the fundamentals nito. Kasi do they still remember their fundamentals? Kasi you have to break down this concept the introduction of algebra, into this. Kasi kung hindi nila alam yung PEMDAS, hindi nila alam yung positive or negative na integers, then maiiwan at maiiwan sila dito. Tama? And that is the main reason kung bakit gumagawa tayo ng mga makeup classes, right? Or if merong mga classes na separate, if you have time. Uh, may mga teachers na nag-volunteer tayo nila to tutor. Bakit? Kasi nga, may mga students na wala pa sila nitong fundamentals. And when you're creating online content, ganun din yung thinking. So, I want to teach algebra, and because I want to teach algebra, I want to, I need to go back dun sa fundamentals. Ano ba yung mga building blocks ng algebra na to? Now, for those naman students who are more advanced, you also have to consider din yung future na iteration ng algebra. So, algebra doesn't end with that. Of course, nag-evolve yan to a higher form. So, now we have potential for growth, so calculus naman, or at least pre-calc para dun sa mga madaling-madali na to sa kanila. Okay? So, yan yung, yan yung, ano eh, yan yung pinaka-transition na yan. Okay? So, let's do it na mas practical. Okay? So, for example, um, one of the things that I used to do when I started my channel was this, I was focusing on my techniques kasi, um, ano ba, yung, like when you ask my students, ano ba y- what makes you different from other, other instructors, it probably would be this. No? I have certain tricks or techniques when it comes to test taking. Uh, and I use them for problems na nagre-recur sa mga aptitude exams. For example, ang word-word problems, you would know, lagi yang nasa exam. Magsimula ka sa science high school exam, UPCAT, LAE, PhilSAT, civil service, Skype job exam. Minsan lumalabas yung word-word problems na yan. So, you have that. Now, kung gusto ko ito ituro sa mga estudyante ko, and I would create my hero piece, which is yung work problems, I have to think, wait lang, ready na ba sila for this? And dahil uh, sa experience ko again for the past five years of seeing comments sa ilalim, dati nagugulat pa ako kasi I used to only create content for word problems. Kasi ina- inaasum ko, falsely inaasum ko, na Dahil adult learners yung pinag-uusapan, marunong na sila ng basics. Alam na nila yun, hindi nila kailangan balikan. But learning from them and sa comments and sa mga people who are humble enough to admit na nakalimutan nila yan or hindi nila yan na-cover when they were younger, I have to take it down a notch. So word problems, ano ba yung mga kailangan dyan, requirements dyan? Now, when you solve word problems, if you remember this, you would need to have at least a basic understanding of algebra. So you, know, you need to know how to solve inequalities. Marunong ka dapat mag-transpose, marunong ka dapat mag-cancel out. So dahil ito yung word problems, ito yung kailangan kong gawin, pinanganak ngayon yung solving equalities. Kasi kailangan eh. Hindi, hindi sila makaka-transition sa work problems kung wala. So again, this is basically one 
big idea and then breaking it down into smaller bite-sized pieces na maiintindihan nila. Now, dahil sa the equality siya pinag-uusapan, pero hindi pa rin enough kasi sa work-word problems, we're also dealing with fractions sa formula. So now, I now have to create yung aking series on fraction operations. Kasi kailangan natin pag-usapan yung adding ng fractions eh. Bago pa sila maka-transition sa solving ng equalities, lalo na sa solving ng work problems, dapat okay sila sa, sa adding ng fractions. Eh yung iba, lalong wala, uh, nahihirapan pa rin dyan. So what do we do? Babalik tayo ulit sa finding the LCD. Something as basic as this, you would need to have a bit of leeway para foundational pieces hanggang makarating ka dun sa goal mo. Et, remember, ito yung goal natin, pero hindi enough na yan lang. So ibibreakdown mo pa siya into that. Now again, ang beauty lang nun would be, since nagawa mo na to, it will open a door for you to evolve yung, yung teaching. Pwede ka na ngayon sa pipe word, word problems. Kasi yung pipe, pipe word problems basically make use of the same formula ng word word problems. So now you can go to that route para naman dun sa more advanced learners mo. So again, ganun yung breakdown. Um, <laughs> yung process. Kaya, kaya when people ask me, parang, Coach, hindi ka ba nauubusan ng ideas for videos? The answer is no. Kasi there are always things na nanganganak. Okay? Nanganganak pa na ng bago na namang need for a certain topic. So dumadami siya ng dumadami. And if any of you are going to participate in this, in the goal to democratize education in the Philippines, it will only be helpful. Bakit? Kasi when I met Dr. Esperanza, if you don't know him, again, si Number Bender uh, sa, sa YouTube, ang dali nang usapan namin, sabi ko lang, Kuya, ano, um, if you want, kasi ang talagang ano siya eh, doctor siya ng maths, no? Again, psych major ako. So, um, na, na COVID pa naman, so hindi ako makakabalik sa school for my educational credits. Gusto ko sana eh, para makapaglet ko. Eh, hindi ko siyempre magagawa yan right now. Pero siya, ang kanyang buong uh, background is in higher math, calculus, trig. Um, ang kanyang background is in higher... Um, functions in higher um, levels ng difficulty. So, when nag-usap kami, sabi ko, ay, na, alam mo, sabi ko, kuya, answer ka sa panalangin ko. Kasi lahat ng mga nagre-request sa akin ng trig, nagre-request sa akin ng calc, sa'yo ko nalang i-refer, ikaw na magturo sa kanila. So, now I can build down instead of building up. Kasi may sumalo na nito eh. Now, imagine, if all of you start creating online lessons, di ba, mapupuno natin yung mga plots na yan and uh, mabubuild natin yung entire library ng content. So that's actually my goal. That's my dream. Kasi hindi lahat kaya kong ituro. ba? And the great way din dyan is that hindi lang sa hindi ko kaya lahat ituro lang topics, it'll save me time kasi kung hindi, aaralin ko pa yun bago ko maituro. And another thing, some students actually work sa teaching style ng ibang teachers. So if bubuksan natin yung library na yun, Okay? Yung mga students who think na I'm too fast or think na masyado akong um, humuhugot kasi I make hugot jokes when I teach, hindi sila natutuwa doon. They can find someone who will speak their own language. And segueing into that, I know there are 9.8 thousand uh, of you who are watching right now. Um, almost 10,000 people. I know you have your own languages kung nasan kayo. My dream would be that. I mean, di ba, for a Bisaya uh, student, to learn in their native tongue, mas maganda. Di ba? So, the, yung understanding should come first. That's just my personal opinion. So, all of these things, again, there's an entire, isipin nyo, ito, this is just a small sliver of the entire map. If you're playing, if you play RPGs or anything, board games like that, imagine nyo na lang, kapiraso lang yan dun sa buong mundo ng content na pwede natin create together. Okay? Now, yung prep work natin, uh, again, tapos na tayo sa content muna for now. More, I'll have time naman hopefully for questions later. We're going to talk about flow next. Now, when we talk about flow, um, ito yung, bibigay ko sa inyo yung what I use. Okay? Um, ito yung ideal, again, within the 15-minute, 20-minute video. Sometimes kapag masyadong mahaba yung content, tinitake down ko a notch. Pero one thing I do is, if kunyari, nag-introduce ako ng technique or topic, for example, nag-introduce ako ng exponents dun sa formula ng lesson na yun. Nililink ko na lang yung older video on exponents. May series na kasi ako on that. So, yun yung idea nun. Kung kanyari, if you find this too hard, you can click right here to find yung lesson on exponents. Ganun yung nagawa ko sa flow. Pero ako, so, so I can stick to one topic for every 15 to 20 minute video. And it usually works like this. I start out with a challenge question. Now, yung challenge question, usually I post that online. 
this is a bit of a teaser. Kung wala yan dun sa video before, so the week before, uh, kasi I post on a schedule. I post math videos on Mondays and language lessons on Wednesdays, tapos bonus content on the other days. Now, yung dalawang hero piece ko na yun, yung math and language, usually, nakaplano naman na yung sequence nun. So, challenge question will either appear sa Instagram ko, <laughs> um, dun sa Instagram story, kasi may quiz function dun, or sa... Uh, as a teaser dun sa previous lesson or means in social media ko. Yung challenge question would be something na hopefully, pag nakita nila to, ma-realize nila na, okay, ay, hindi ko pala alam yun, no? Sige, I'll stay for the next lesson. So, yun yung, yun yung goal ng challenge question. It has to be one question a little bit trickier than you, what you would use sa iyong discussion. That's what I do. And then, comes the discussion. Again, dapat to may healthy serving ng ng explanation at saka ng pauses. Pag sinabi yung pauses, ibig sabihin, uh, one thing I do is I demonstrate and then meron akong your turn. Pag sinabi your turn, ibig sabihin I give them time, maybe a minute to solve the problem themselves or to think about it and then i-discuss namin after. So, yun yung full discussion. After the discussion comes yung challenge question explainer. So, kung may challenge question last week, i-explain ko kung paano yun makuha. And then, I will give them time for the quick quiz. Ang idea here would be this, mas difficult yung challenge question Medyo okay, ano to, escalating yung difficulty ng discussion. Tapos dahil yung challenge question stumped them at the very beginning, dahil hindi nga nila alam yung gagawin nila doon, ideally, yeah, then they will pay extra attention dito. At pag nakaya na nila to, kasi I give them extra time, o sige, now that you know the concept, try nyo na yung challenge question. Pag nakuha nila to, it's such a boost of confidence for them. And now they have that confidence entering the quick quiz, which I have integrated in the lesson. Usually yan, three minutes yan. Uh, naka-time din yun, may music, para hindi na nila kailangan umalis dun sa platform, dun sa video. So, nandun na yon lahat-lahat. Now, again, if online learning pinag-uusapan, pwede rin to na nasa quiz or nasa ibang platform, yung quiz format, um, that would also work for this. And then after that, usually I end with a teaser. This is for the next lesson, for the, for the next week naman. And um, let me just walk you through this. No? This is yung aking lecture on capitalization rules. Uh, I made this video a few weeks back. But I want to show you how it usually works. If you notice, yung PowerPoint ko walang, ano yan, walang laman. Bare minimum yan. Ang idea niyan would be this, kasi most of my students also study using a phone. So kung ang PowerPoint mo is a lot like what I'm using right now for my own presentation, baka, baka ma-overstimulate sila. So if you see muted yung colors, I also use a background na hindi white na white. If you notice itong background ko, hindi masyadong puti kasi may glare yan dun sa kids, no? Para pwede sila manood ng mas matagal. Uh, just things to consider. And um, then I post this, no? Ito yung, ito yung itsura ng quick quiz sa Instagram. So if ever meron tayong mga teaser or anything like that, I show them this. Oh, you can follow me on Instagram, see this, participate next time. Now, dahil na-stomp sila dito or nagkamali sila, and sometimes I also give them the statistics. So sasabihin ko, kunyari, uh, when I put up this quiz, only 20% of the people who answered got it right. So one out of five. So hindi maganda yung stats na yun. And now I can lead into yung aking lesson. So again, all of these, the visual siya, they know this is the topic right now. There are four more videos in the series coming up soon. Okay? Now, capitalize the first word again. These are the concepts. I make them as interactive as possible. So kaya ito yung concept. Now in this part right here, they have to choose kung ano tama. Uh, in this, they have to also choose kung ano yung tama, kung ikakapitalize ba yung they or hindi. So, andun yung, okay, concept, participation, concept, participation. Ganun yung pinaka-process para nakikip din yung attention nila. And then, we go to yung challenge question. Tapos, I give them the correct answer to the challenge question. I tell them, it doesn't matter kung ano yung sagot nyo first time. Now, you have a chance to change things. So, kung tama sila, very good. Ganun. And then, you have your quiz. For the quiz, I have an entire thing. I give them time for this to answer three minutes to five minutes. And then, let's see how you did. Okay? Tapos, ito yung quiz. And then, I just answer along with them. Now, there is a planted teaser dito. Ito yung Margaret Mead. Kasi Margaret Mead is a name, right? And um, dahil hindi nakakapitalize yung M ng Mead, I can tell them na, oh, if hindi nyo nakatch yan, that is because, pag-uusapan natin yan in the next video, sa susunod na series. So, be back here ng Wednesday next week, pag-uusapan natin capitalization when it comes to names and nicknames. So, yun. Ganun yung flow ko usually. After 15 minutes yan, 15 to 20 minutes, you're done. 
if I feel na kaya sa comment section kasi I usually tell them oh tell me how you did sa quiz sa comment section so they would say I two two out of five lang po nakuha ko or anything like that if I notice na medyo mababa I make extra quizzes or exercises on my website and then I post I put them up on my social media para pwede nilang magpag-practice siya ng extra so all of these things again for free so yun yung pinaka flow niya and this right here has been tweaked a lot I used to only do discussion kaya lang na-realize ko kapag nag-discuss ka lang, tapos hindi kasi sila nag-apply right away, they forget. And lalo na sa panahon ngayon. Kasi di ba, sanay sila sa passive entertainment. You have kids who have, um, you know, have their phones sa, sa shower with them. So sanay sila na nanonood ng videos, pero hindi sila nagpe-pay attention. So you really have to make it as, or, as ano, active as possible. Dapat may participation. Next would be the equipment. And... Um, a lot of teachers, I feel, ito yung challenge nila. Like, they're scared na, ay, nako, wala akong enough na gamit for me to do this. But the fact is, the mere fact na kayo ay nakakanood right now, it means you have enough. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. The best equipment you can use are the ones you already have. Okay, that's the concept. It doesn't have to be the most expensive type ng gadget. You don't need to have a tablet. You don't need to have things. Bakit? Kasi ito, I can speak on this with authority. Here's what I started with. I started with this. This is a Samsung W150F. Um, yan yung camera ko point and shoot lang when I started making videos. 720p, okay? And ano yan, 30 frames lang, malabo siya, tapos luma na. Ito yung unang, unang setup. I have a whiteboard. Ano yung whiteboard lang na nalagyan ko ng to-do list ko sa, sa room. And then I, I made my first few videos. Now, this, this is one of my first videos, uh, Speed Math Multiplying by 5. I have an updated version nito, which is funnily shot sa, sa YouTube studio uh, with all the works as in my, my production team. Tapos gulong-gulo ako kasi first time ko nakalanas na my production team. Pero funny kasi that same video used to look like this. Okay? Meron lang akong white words sa likod ko. In fact, nalaglag pa siya sa video. An experience that uh, Dr. Peter and I share. <laughs> Nalalaglagan kami ng whiteboard pang nagtuturo. At ang pangit-pangit pa ng sulat ko. So, ganyan lang siya. Okay. I have that. Walang tumutulong sa akin to film. Nandun lang ako sa kwarto ko. And this video, before I took it down, actually got 108.2,000 views. So, 100,000 views plus siya. With just this. And this I did not buy for vlogging. I already have that. Probably sa inyo, meron na kayong point-and-shoot camera, di ba? Para sa mga family reunion or gatherings or anything like that. Now, nag-level up ako after some time kasi ang aking, ang, ang idea ko is any money that I earn from the YouTube uh, channel, which is actually very, very small din, iniipon ko yon to buy equipment. So, when it came time na, okay, may pambili na ako ng GoPro. So, I got the GoPro Hero 4 na silver. Very luma na yan before. I had a basic laptop na kahit paano makakapag-screen capture na ako. And I came up with this. This is the first video doon sa Team Laika channel mismo, yung dedicated channel na. So, ang itsula niyan would be like this. I, I also have a tablet, a drawing tablet, kasi I used to design posters and stuff uh, before when I was younger. Dagdag na income yun for me. Um, ginagamit ko yung tablet, I'm, I write on top of the PowerPoint presentation. So, yan lang yung video ko. Wala nga yung face yan eh. Okay? So, ganyan lang siya. So, again, for those of you who feel na um, shy po ako, camera shy ako, you don't even need to add your, your, your picture or your video. If you want, you can just take a screen capture of your screen. Now, after that, it got 142,000 uh, views so far. But again, this is sa span ng almost five years. Okay, so mahaba. Ang maganda lang sa kind of content na educational is, if you film it right now, release it right now, hindi siya, maaring hindi siya mag-trending, pero hanggat nandun yun, marami yung natutulungan. So hindi mo siya kailangan i-revise, hindi mo siya kailangan tanggalin. And people will still look for that. Um, in fact, in the past 28 days, this particular video, which I shot five years ago, got about 20,000 new views. So, di ba? Think of it that way. Now, right now, ang ginagamit ko is this. I have a MacBook Pro given to me by YouTube. Um, Price ko siya sa YouTube Next Up. Um, they gave it to me. Saktong-sakto kasi nag-quit na yung laptop ko. Um, this was way back in 2017. I have a Canon M50, which actually has a 
good enough lens na ngayon na kahit pa paano maliwanag na ako kasi malaki na yung sensor. Uh, and then, I have a tablet. Yung tablet ko with an Apple Pencil that has been my uh, weapon for the past three years. And yun yun yung ginagamit ko with my new content. And I've had comments, funny comments from students who would say, Coach, gumaganda ka or bakit iba na itsura mo ngayon? And ang sagot talaga dun, honestly, is malaking bagay din yung camera um, kasi maliwanag na. Okay? And now I have kahit pa paano a dedicated space may desk ako dito that I can film. Dati yung kwarto ko ganyan kasi I... I have all my books in my, I have a, a room na 3 by 4 feet lang, eh, 3 by 4 meters lang. So, malit lang lang yung kwarto ko. And I used to fold, fold my bed para makapag-film ako. So, again, hindi kailangan yung equipment. The best equi equipment that you can use are the ones you already have. Now, ang maganda pa ngayon is, dati kasi when I started making videos, hindi lahat na, ng phones merong screen capture function. Ngayon, meron na. Especially if you're using an iPhone, you can actually just use, kunyari, Kung meron kang PowerPoint na, di ba? Kung magamit na rin kayo ng PowerPoint sa school, right? PowerPoint screen screen recorder and then yun, video form na siya. Sometimes you don't even have to edit it nga eh. So all of these things, technology is catching up with us. It's actually making things easier for us. We just need to maximize yung potential niya. Now, this video right here got uh, 1.6 million views as of today. Um, so again, one video you shot three years ago, it becomes, di ba, something na Mari reach pa rin yung maraming tao uh, habang tumatagal. So yun yung potential for for online teaching. And again, it doesn't end dun sa classroom mo. So, platform, considerations lang sa platform. Uh, I'll just run through this. It's not that big of a deal I think for for you guys, especially for those of you who are teaching um, sa mga schools kasi your schools will be able to provide you with a platform. You can also make use with of yung mga ibang mga platforms offered. May, ang Vibal I think has their own um, packets set up for schools. All of these things, you can work with them. They have their own associates that they can, you can discuss um, with them kung ano yung mga pinaprovide nila mga services mo. Uh, ako, for example, I only use free platforms, um, but these are the considerations. The first one would be cost. Kasi everything from website maintenance to data storage costs money. Um, you can make use of the free stuff, maximize na lang. Um, and kung lalo na kung walang budget. Ngayon lang, I have my own dedicated website simply because kaya na isustain ng YouTube income ko yung bayad dun sa, dun sa website. Yun yun. Okay? Um, security, of course. Lalo na kung we're talking about students, lalo na kung minors. You have to be very careful about this. Reach. So again, do you want the content to be available only to your students or sa labas? Kasi there are options for that. Kahit sa YouTube, uh, again, I made that, that mistake when I made, made my first video. Hindi ko siya na-unlisted. Kung unlisted video kasi siya, yung link will be exclusive sa mga people na papadalan ko ng link. Ang nangyari sa akin, nagawa kong ano, <laughs> na-public ko siya. So, again, you can do that kung nahihiya ka, unlisted mo na mga videos mo. Okay? Copyright, of course, uh, that would be all, uh, also a consideration. Lalo na kung... Uh, dito, I'm very careful about this. So, teachers then please be careful. Lalo na if you're using questions, pages, illustrations from books um, or content na ginawa ng iba. Um, please be very careful about that. Yung integrity natin also has to hold. So, if as much as possible, please make your own content. Ako personally, I make my own slides, I make my own questions, lahat ng mga challenge questions, lahat ng mga quizzes nila, I don't get anything online. Ako lang. Mas ano ako doon, mas kampante ako na I make my own questions. So, yun yung, that's my thing. Okay? Uh, if you want to adapt that, go ahead. Uh, para lang mas safe. Kasi ako ay try to err on the side of caution. Tools, of course. Ano yung mga klaseng tools? Uh, may mga quizzes ba built in? May mga links? Anong pwede kong gawin? Of course, feedback. Anong response ng mga students natin? Potential for monetization, is it something that you want to consider? And of course, your maintenance. Kasi ang thing talaga is, ano eh, uh, it's very tedious, honestly. It takes a lot of time. Like people think now when you make online content or you teach online, it's basically just you sit sitting on, ano, in front of your laptop. But it doesn't really work that way. Uh, a lot of the things happen behind the scenes. So everything from lesson development, creating your slides, all of these things, pati yung maintenance ng website, ng content, posting to make sure that people are um, on top of things, all of this has to happen. So, for example, kung meron akong video na, like mamaya, meron akong video na ipapublish mamayang 8pm. In order for my students to know about that, I will need to 
promote that kahit pa paano on social media. So I will tell them na merong video mamayang 8. Kahit alam nila na every Wednesday naman may 8, you have to keep reminding them. And sa inyo as teachers, extra work for that. Kasi we are talking about students who are really ano ba, written down for you. So kayo talaga ang directly accountable sa kanila. But again, tiyagaan lang talaga. And I know na hindi to magiging bago sa inyo. Kasi, I mean, you are used to making adjustments for your students. We grew up that way, di ba? Mula sa maingay and electric fan, sa classroom na hinati para sa dalawa. All of these things are daily things that you have to deal with. The thing lang would be, you can do it at home in shorts. <laughs> Kasi you're doing it online. So yun yung pinaka-positive na doon. Uh, balikan natin tong number na to kanina. Sabi natin, 2.8 million, 116,677, and uh, 320. Do you have any guesses kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng numbers na ito? Yeah. Now, looking at these numbers, actually, I'm not, I'm not one to really pay attention to the numbers, no? Pero every time I feel discouraged, I go back to this. And it's something actually that uh, Dr. Esperanza actually shared din sa akin, itong perspective na to. Now, at ano ibig sabihin itong numbers na ito? Here's the thing. I have 2.8 million hours of watch time on my channel. Ibig sabihin, people have watched the videos I put up for 2.8 million hours. Okay, oras. Which converts into 116,667 days. So, ibig sabihin, the content I put up online, parang may nagpe-play continuously for 116,667 days. Equivalent sa 320 years. So, if you think about it, ako, being this young, if you think about it, I've already taught people non-stop for 320 years. 320 years. So it's more than more than ilang lifetime na ganun. So I can live, teach non-stop and still not make up for this. And this is just content I made in the past five years. So there are more. And uh, ito yung potential again. I think uh, at the end of the day, all of us, we, we as teachers, we want to matter, right? We want to create change. We want to encourage kids. We want to help people. Ang teaching has, has never been an internal thing. Eh. Okay? Hindi siya katulad ng sabi natin being in business na pag, oh, if I reach my first million before I hit 25, I'm good. Hindi ganun eh. Lagi siyang palabas. So, ito yung, ito yung strengths ng online teaching. Now, when we are giving ourselves when we teach, you are basically giving yourself to more people. So, kasi you cannot teach people you cannot reach. The first goal would be for you to reach them. And if they are online, that's the reason why we have to be online. Now, the best question right now would be, now what? Hindi yung how, why, what, or when. Now what? Ano nang gagawin ninyo? So here's my thing. You can improve on anything you haven't even tried. You can improve in anything you haven't even tried. So if you haven't created an online lesson ng naka-format, or if you haven't tried any of the software or editing your videos or planning out your content specifically, specifically for online consumption, think of it that way. Try, try to do that in this next week, please. And a bit of reminder lang, um, as my kind of last quote for you guys, we will not be remembered for the things we can or can't do. What matters more is what we actually do. Like good intentions work well, pero intentions do not readily translate into content. And um, it doesn't really help sometimes. So, well, most of the time. So please start. And uh, again, when are you going to start? Hopefully start as soon as possible. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm looking at yung comments then if there, are, if there are any questions. If you have any specific questions sa tools or sa content or how, how I facilitate my online learning classes, anything like that, Please let me know. Um, I'll read through things. Uh, kung meron pa. So right now there are 9.7k or 9.7 thousand. So 9,700 of you guys. Any questions? I thought, yeah, I like this. Roana Abad sabi ni ma'am, uh, good teachers have the ability to capture a learner's emotions. This is connection, and it's a challenge in shifting to online learning, on, online teaching. How could you show genuine emotions online? Okay, the first thing would be this. Um, when the first question would be this: How do you 
show genuine emotions offline. Okay? Now, why do I ask that question? Kasi when we're dealing with yung students na emotional need ng students, sometimes we need to ask then kung paano natin siya dinideal sa classroom setting. Like, do you talk to them personally? Do you commend them? Do you set them aside? Do you call them out in public? Probably not, kasi alam natin it doesn't work. And the same approaches would apply pagdating sa, on, off, sa online learning. I am known to actually interact with them uh, through my social media accounts, kahit na yung mga learners ko who are not enrolled in the online program. Um, I do emails. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching outside of yung CAN na lesson. So, those are the things. And another thing pala, now that we are there, dun sa, sa genuine emotional teaching, okay, language choice is very important. Um, you know, the concept of Team Laika is actually, it's actually weird. Eh. Kasi, kaya siya naging Team Laika, kasi they named themselves. And the reason was because there was a culture built uh, within the narrative of the videos, which is challenging if you think about it. Because when I make videos, diba, they're in, they're out sa public consumption. Eh. So kahit sino pwedeng manood nun. Pero how do I kind of create the culture or maintain the order sa, sa channel or sa team, sa narrative? I actually use words. So I, you have to be very careful when picking out your words. So sometimes I would, would tell them if they're going too far sa comment section, I would tell them na, Oh, remember guys, uh, uh, dito sa team natin, this is what we do. And then I would tell them. I would give them a soft reminder. Uh, sometimes I also take screen, screenshots of rude comments or anything like that. I confront those. And uh, all of these things, again, are hindi na bago sa inyo. So you're already doing that offline. So kung may mga problem, may problematic na mga pieces, it's all about choice sa language. You have to be very deliberate sa language. No? Which is why important din ang confidence. Kasi ang, I don't know, pero you probably would agree with me, kapag kinakabahan tayo, lalo na pag nakaharap ka sa camera, you tend to ramble kung ano na yung sinasabi natin, right? So, um, if you find yourself doing that, just don't put it up. Be calm and confident. And always keep yung positive mindset when you're making your lesson. Um, dapat coming siya from a point of ano, calm, hindi desperation. Kasi doon nagiging dangerous yung language. So, choice of words, very, very important. Um, I tell them, eh, na parang, okay, if, if this is your expectation, I, I know I've heard a lot of you say that you're too old for this, but please uh, give me a shot or give yourself a shot, something like that. So, na alleviate yung emotions kahit na hindi sila directly nakaka interact, kung, kung impossible yan. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, some other questions? And Krista Don Matella. Um, thank you, Mamlaika, for the informative talk. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, for Bibal, for inviting me. May I know what specific editor or app do you use to edit your videos? Ako, I personally use Final Cut Pro uh, X or Final Cut Pro 10. Nadito siya sa, kasi sa, sa Mac, yun na yung nakasanayan ko. Uh, when I used yung aking Windows na laptop, I used Cyberlink, Power Director. Ang dahilan nun kasi, uh, actually, I've been editing videos since I was in high school. <laughs> my Lola bought us for our debut yung video camera na tape pa, mini DV pa yung nagre-record. So, bago mo siya ma-edit sa laptop, i-convert mo pa yun sa file. May cordon, everything like that. So, sanay ako dun sa ganong classing splicing na, na software. So, yun yung ginagamit ko, Final Cut Pro. Um, there are a bunch of free options naman din. I have a friend. Uh, if you know him, si Raf, uh, about Raf, makeup vlogger siya. He used to edit yung videos niya sa phone, sa iMovie, sa kanyang Apple phone. So, again, uh, may kasabihan kami sa music eh. It's the Indian at the Pana. So, it's really not about what you use. It's how you use it. And it's the same with your software. Um, next 
Dracolet Pogi. <laughs> Just want to ask how many times should you post videos in a week? For example, as a preschool teacher, hindi lang po isang subject na tinuturo ko po in each level. Actually, very challenging kung preschool kasi you have to be really creative no, to hold their attention. Pero dapat naman kasi short videos lang. Kapag umabot ng 20 minutes, baka hindi na nanonood yung bulinit. No? Uh, if you notice yung mga educational videos on YouTube, ang iikli pero repetitive siya. So they will keep repeating yung same video again and again. Um, okay, ako, ako kasi ang schedule ko talaga is one math video in uh, every Monday, one language video every Wednesday, and then additional. A suggestion ko would be to start out with at least one video every week. Okay, and then if you feel na, okay, may pondo na ako, may pondo na ako for sabi natin one month. So I already have four videos. Mayroon na ako, sob na yung checklist ko for, for this next month. And then now I can explore adding a second video. Okay, kasi may sync eh. May parang pattern yan when you're making your videos. Ako, for, ako in particular, before the, before the lockdown, uh, before the quarantine was initiated, I already had three weeks worth of content na nakapila. So nung kailangan ko mag-take ng break at mag-adjust sa mga certain things, I had three weeks ng pahinga na hindi ko kailangan gumawa ng content. So again, yun yung thing. Ang key here kasi here is yung sustainability niya. Do not kill yourself making content. I used to do that. Kaya ganun yung tsura ko lalo na sa older videos. Um, ang ugali ko nun pag natapos ko yung video, ipopost ko siya ngayon. Which is not good. I used to post minsan 12 videos in a day. Hindi siya maganda kasi na-overwhelm din yung learners. Pag masyado marami. Yun. So what else? Uh, Harold, Harold J. Sister. Upon recording, paano mo po mababawasan yung noise sa paligid? Thanks. Number one, if you have an electric fan, or an aircon sa room, turn it off. Kung wala kayong mic, ang unang-unang kalaban is wind noise. So, huwag <laughs> kayong mag... Uh, wala na dapat aircon or electric fan kung wala kang, kung wala kang mic. If you have kahit yung, uh, yung earphones, di ba, yung earphones mo may mic, that can actually help. Uh, you can do that. Lalo na kung nagsiscreen record ka naman, pwede mong ilapit sa'yo. Um, merong software na naglilinis ng noise. Then... Um, if you have an editor, for example, on Final Cut Pro, may, no, may noise remover, may noise removal siya na option. Pwede rin yun. Yung hum kasi ng aircon at saka yung hangin ng electric fan, yun yung pinaka nakakainis na noise. Yun yung kailangan talaga i-minimize. Kaya if you notice, kahit yung mga paborito yung YouTuber, probably pawis na pawis sila kapag, kapag nag-vlog. Uh, that's because of that. So ako naman, per personally, I turned the aircon, the AC on, um, pag malamig na yung kwarto, ito turn off ko siya tapos doon ako magme-video. Pag uminit uli bubuksan ko uli. So ganun, medyo abuso na busado lang ng onti doon sa aircon. Next, uh, is there a group making contents for kindergarten and lower grade levels? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, pero ako I'm I've been trying to find more educational content creators, especially on YouTube. So if any of you already have your channels, please get in touch with me. I would love to hear from you. Online teaching is wonderful, but can we use this for students with special needs? I think this is for, uh, uh, especially with me being an RPM, passion ko rin talaga yung uh, kids with special needs. Uh, this can be a different discussion for another time. Pero yes, um, number one, because uh, kids with special needs, most of the time, need repetition. And kapag live ang teaching mo, limitado yung oras, at saka limitado yung strength mo. Kasi if you're talk, for example, if you're teaching them how to say, tie their shoelaces, how many times can you do it with the same amount of care and same amount of energy and positivity hanggang mapapagod ka na? Diba? Kung nga, 10 times mo nang ginagawa at hindi niya pa rin nakukuha, pwede ka ma-frustrate. Pero pag online, um, medyo na-alleviate ka eh. So now, they can just watch the video and then you, para kang may co-teacher, you can now pay attention to what they're doing. So yun yung maganda sa special needs cases. Um, for ano din, for those who are, sabi nga, people who are deaf or hearing impaired, subtitles are also great. I actually have volunteers who make the captions for my videos. All of them are from Team Laika din. Mga learners before na nakapasa na sa exam, gusto nila mag-give back. Volunteers din yun. So now we have kahit pa paano an, abil an ability to reach those who are hard of hearing or um, deaf. So all of those things, then you can make use of technology for that. Okay, so I guess I'm not sure if I can, can stay uh, with you for even longer. Um, any other questions? 
Yeah, we have a one more session of this later. If and if you came in late, or if you want another run through, or if you want your question to be to be read, uh, you can send it over uh, again later. Again, thank you so much, Vibal, for Vibal Group for facilitating this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I I've always wanted to to talk to teachers, uh, especially about creating content online. Um, when I was fresh off of college, so I graduated from college, I was uh, I was a staff sa college, and uh, doon sa kanila parang retreat. Meron dong ob objective na pinasulat yung kanilang dream or goal. And I don't know why, pero I wrote there to teach teachers, to equip equippers. Tapos nung time na yun, walang malayang malay sa isip ko ang teaching. And now that I'm looking back doon, this entire thing has been an answer to that dream no? na I wrote years, decades ago. Then naman decades. Years ago. And um, yeah, so thank you so much, Vibal, for, for making this happen. And again, if you have any other questions, then you can reach out to me directly then if you have any questions. Um, please consider re consider putting up your content online. If you're already doing it for your students, uh, yun na lang din yung quick ano ko, encouragement ko sa inyo. If you're already doing it for your students and there's an option for you to record that, now the next step would be as, be as simple as putting it up online. And uh, then you can teach the world. Okay, so uh, I guess I guess that's it uh, muna for now. Um, again, we have another session naman later. And uh, I had a great time with you guys. I hope you had a great time as well. And I hope you learned something. Uh, as we always say sa, sa team, ano eh, never stop learning. So, aja aja. Kain yan. Uh, see you in my next video. And uh, again, reach out to me if you have any questions. Then, uh, thank you, Sir Vibal, for making this possible. And uh, I guess, bye for now.